Hey guys, if you're enjoying the content that I'm making, please click that subscribe button. Also remember to click that bell button and make sure to tick that box to send all notifications so you don't miss out on any videos. With that in mind, let's get on with the video. What's up guys, welcome to Munchkins Gaming, where we take your gaming to the next level. This is Munchkins, logging in to bring you another The City of Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Power and Magic's Chasm Rising event, version 2. So, I'm only calling this version 2, because this is the new one, and I made a video on the last... Power and Magic's Chasm Rising event, which is totally different from what we got this time around. First off, I want to give a shout out to Carlo Consignado for giving me a little bit of advice on which support that I can try or new support that I can try because I was struggling to get that 30, 32,000 points and I think it was a little bit of mistake on my part as well. I was really pushing on something that wasn't working. Uh, and I, w I did, he brought up a few things as well that, I, that was in the back of my head that I was going to try. And I think I would have made it eventually to 32,000, 30, but uh, he made it a lot faster. So thank you for the advice, Carlo. But anyway, let's get on with this video. The first thing that I want to say before I do give you the general tips and guides is don't follow what I have done in this video. Unfortunately, the uh, when I did the 32,000 points, I did not record that <laughs> for some reason. I thought I was recording, but I wasn't and yeah. I'll just give you guys some general tips and guys, and hopefully it'll it'll get you there. I, I did take a screenshot of my score, and you will see that I have actually done it. Anyway, first tips for you guys is to limit your ability usage. Now this goes without saying. Um, in my last Power and Magic's Chasm video. I did say this as well because this is a very long fight. You do want to um, limit the ability usage that you do, but you need to know when to use it and how many uses you can use on that particular wave. For example, for lightning, for my lightning, uh, in the first wave, I'm allowed to use one spark strike and one flourish of steel. Now this could change as well. Sometimes I do uh, two spark strike and one flourish of steel, depending on the, the turns that you get. But you, you have to remember on the back of your head, this is how many times I can use this ability. And so and so I need to have this much at the end of the fight. So that's my first advice for you guys, because I think um, you need to envision uh, what you need for the final wave and the final wave isn't that hard actually the last power in magic's chasm was a lot harder in terms of the last boss but that was probably because of the limited amount of characters that we have but now we have a whole lot more a whole lot more and um, makes it a lot easier so Depending on your team, I, I do I would recommend that uh, you use characters that have a lot of ability usage and you can take advantage of. Having that Brave plus HP attack certainly helps as well because that is one turn. If you can imagine using one of your abilities and it's just a Brave attack, the next turn is another turn that you'll use an HP attack. So having that extra brave plus HP attack will definitely help. Next one is your support characters have to have a good synergy with your team. So what I mean by this is basically if you're mainly using a physical team, for example, you don't have magic based characters, then for your support, you better have a magic attacker because in their they are weak to a lot of elemental 
Um, there are a lot of boss that are weak to, against elemental attacks and magic attacks as well. Now, I do prefer having a physical team because they are the ones who have a lot of the Brave plus HP attack. Um, but certainly if you have a good magic based team, you can definitely bring a physical attacker as well. Although, in on the top of my head, I do believe there's a lot more physical weakness in, in terms of the bosses. Uh, yeah, there's definitely more physical uh, weakness for this fight. So I, it's it'll depend on you guys, but just just for your support characters, just so you know that you have to have a good synergy with your main team. Now for the third one is basically bringing your boosted characters. You don't really have to, but if you're struggling you might want to consider it and if you have the gems to sink into you know leveling them up and stuff which i sort of regretted <laughs> that th that i did that i feel like i shouldn't have used all my gems on this banner because for 500 gems and i wasted 5000 it's uh <laughs> let's just say it wasn't fair <laughs> but i needed to do it to to um to show you guys but i didn't really have to <laughs> i don't know i don't know i i, I suppose i could have gotten that 32,000 points eventually um especially because i was making mistakes i was tired of, i don't know so um but yeah boosted characters such as balthier shantoro terra sarah irvine and edgar are all boosted for this event so they have the you don't have to max limit break them for them to perform at the top level so you know lightning is always a good option because of her ability to dish out dps and she does have flourish of steel and i just feel like you can papa limo is another good one especially if you're fighting the uh berserker armor the magic berserker armor whatever whatever it is and yeah uh i think that's pretty much it there's vincent is also a good character to have especially with his live war shot that deals quite a lot of damage and uh, a lot of the boss are actually weak to his um thunder base attacks that's why lightning is actually good in this one as well um composing your team around synergy is always uh, something you have to think about now for the last tip is basically bring ifrit as your summon however keep in mind that the last boss which is the chimera resists fire attacks so this is where i made my mistakes i was using my summon at the end of the fight um just because i was i was scared that it'll break me and that shouldn't be the case I, even though i was using vincent's beastly Mighty Beastly Flare to reduce the, its weakness to fire. I think that's where I was getting deducted on points. But anyway, let's get on with this fight analysis wave by wave. Welcome to the first wave, which is the most annoying wave, I think, <laughs> where you will fight a heretic booster machine and a heretic prototype now the way i have done this fight is basically the prototype you can just break it and leave it make sure to kill the booster machine first because whatever you do it, even if you break the booster machine it will not fall down you need to kill it asap before it does its wave cannon now if it does use its wave cannon and you don't have a healer then this is quite a pointless fight for you and that means you haven't met the dps check you have to kill it before it fires its wave cannon you have about four or five turns i can't remember on top of my head but you need to kill the booster machine now once you have killed it 
after breaking the prototype here and there, obviously that'll give you the extra brave that you need. Then you can concentrate on the prototype. Then the prototype, I feel like this is where where I was wasting a lot of turns because I tried to limit a lot of my ability usage, and usually I would finish this fight around 40 turns. Definitely, you can. When I got my 32,000 points, I had extra abilities that I could have used and probably lower that a little bit more. Um, I, I can't remember on top of my head since I don't have the video uh, that I think I was around 30 something turns. That was my best one out of all my tries and that pushed me through getting the 32,000 points. But anyway, I don't really want to go over all the abilities because I feel like I've covered these two quite a lot and if you guys actually want to see its ability usage you can just go on the screen and hold 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 the tap and you will see all their abilities but um, you know I think that's it for the this wave will go to the second wave now and this second wave is my worst nightmare the heretic berserker armor I still really hate this guy, I swear, I really hate this guy. I hate magic, I mean physical and range resistant bosses, I really do. This fight can be a nightmare and can also be your saving grace. Now this is where uh, Carlo, shout out to you again. Uh, told me that try to use Vaughn as your support. It actually kills the Berserker armor a lot quicker. And I did use Vaughn and I did kill it fast. And I must say I got more aggressive on that fight as well. But you can definitely use Papalimo here as well. Because when I was using Papalimo, this was dying on Papalimo's fifth turn. Basically before, sometimes even before my, the Papalimo you know, retreats back, I would have killed this already. So definitely two options there. Um, Vaughn, when I used Vaughn, I had I was more aggressive and, you know, doing HP damage as much as I can. And I do believe Vaughn actually, I would, I would like to say that he actually had one more turn going into the next uh, boss, but, um, don't quote me on that, uh, but definitely can be a nightmare if you don't have a decent magic attacker. Aiko is great here as well, especially with her smite ability. Basically, you'll have a lot of um, HP attacks turned. The only problem is, you know, don't be afraid to get broken here, because if you have a decent magic attacker, whatever he breaks you, you you'll break him back basically if he does like a one turn like you know brave attack and you get broken and the next turn rolls around your Papalimo will just use astral fire and he'll get broken again so don't be afraid to get broken here definitely try to use your HP attacks as much as you can because you want to lo lower the amount of turns that you have made as, as you guys can see I'm already at turn 71 here which is really um, not something that you want. You have to be around 60 something by the end of this fight. Anyway, that's it for this one. Let's go to the third wave. Okay, the third wave is the Heretic Leech. So we have covered the Leech not too long ago. Um, so I won't be covering all its abilities here again. So yeah, anyway. I do believe I covered in the Ramu fight. I think it was in the Ramu fight. Uh, I do believe it's the Ramu somewhere in the in those videos. So it was the last boss for this one of these summons. So in this fight, don't do as I do in this video again. This is not the video that I got thirty two thousand points on. So my advice for you guys here is if you are bringing Ifrit as your summon, which again you should be is to actually use ifrit here 
you can probably avoid these death cutters and you can probably avoid getting cursed. I think that was one of the other ones, the other reasons why I um, got a lower score because of that dang curse, man. It it's like it more than halves your um, uh, what do you call this? Your max brave, and it lasts for like three turns. So definitely use. Don't use uh, Ifrit straight away as soon as the fight starts. You can probably get away with using uh, a few attacks. Its first attack will always be Death Cutter. And this is basically his melee brave attack. And it will re remove the all your buffs and without any frames. And inflate Doom. Basically it will count, count down to zero and you'll get broken no matter how high your brave is you just have to know uh when it's on one you have to use your hp attacks and that's about it and after that you, you know i don't mind the the doom ability or debuff rather it's more the curse which is um really really annoying so yeah use it for it kill it as far as you can it has a lot of weaknesses oh uh I do believe it's weak to range and fire, sorry. That, that's not a lot, there's two, but um, definitely felt a lot more thanks to Vincent. So yeah, we'll go on to the last wave now. And in the last wave, we're gonna be fighting the Heretic Chimera. So the Heretic Chimera actually has a lot of weaknesses. It's basically weak to ice, lightning, or thunder. And, and the physical range and physical melee and magic base attacks as resistant to everything else so it's not like we haven't covered the chimera before but it definitely has a, a lot of abilities depending on you know uh which is gonna use basically but the things that you i saw a lot was back kick and obviously it will buff itself depending on the HP percentage that it has. So there's not much you can do about this. You can definitely steal those buffs or you can inflict him with a lot of debuffs in order to push those buffs away because you can only have five frames of buffs in and debuffs in total. So you can definitely push that out. Titus does this pretty well because he's got the three um, debuffs and Seymour can do that as well but again don't use your Ifrit here it actually I actually feel like it's uh, the main reason why I was stuck at 29k and I would have probably gotten like over 30,000 or 31 32 maybe if I wasn't using Ifrit here but if you have Ramu for whatever reason because that's your highest summon then you can definitely use it here. It is weak to Thunder Base attacks. And so that brings me to the end of this video. Um, unfortunately, there's not much I can tell you with this particular last wave because it's rather easier than the rest. Um, or the first one is probably where you have a lot of turns. In this one, it doesn't really have a lot of HP. It's just the boss that you have to worry about. And they're pretty annoying to be honest with you and if you have a, like a brave battery it's definitely a plus anyway guys that's it for this video remember to click like subscribe and share this video if you find it helpful at all as always i'd like to hear from you guys what's your total score on this fight did you get that thirty-two thousand? and you did you spend a lot of gems to get it for that 500 extra gem at the end Anyway, remember to follow me on Twitter and on Facebook at Munchkins Gaming. And I'll leave my little screenshot at the end of this video. And this is Munchkins logging off. And I'll see you guys in the next level.